the race to become France's new president is down to two. Marine Le Pen and Emmanuel Macron sont qualifiés pour le second tour. This election is about more than just liberal versus conservative. Can this former banker rule that part of France that he Macron, 39 ans, est déjà président. Over the past few months, we've looked at populist right-wing political movements on the rise, like the Front National in France, and the kind of news coverage they've attracted. This week, we'll swing our lens toward the political left and an upstart party in Spain that has issues with the mainstream media there. Podemos is Spanish for we can. The party is barely three years old. It's already Spain's third largest. Its leader, Pablo Iglesias, does not look like your typical Spanish politician. And Podemos's anti-austerity, anti-establishment platform was always destined to get a hostile reception from mainstream media outlets, most of which lean to the right. What Podemos did not see coming, however, was the treatment that it gets from El País, a center-left paper that is the most widely circulated in Spain. Overall, the media coverage of the party has concentrated on stories of corruption, the kind of political company Podemos keeps. The party has even been accused of plotting to destroy Spanish democracy. Iglesias says the mainstream news media's coverage is rooted in fear that Podemos's politics represent a threat to an economic system controlled by big business, a system the mainstream media are very much a part of. The Listening Post's Marcela Pizarro now from Madrid on Podemos, its communication strategy and what it's up against in the Spanish media. It's not unusual for media figures to slip into politics and vice versa. But Paolo Iglesias hasn't left one career for the other. The Spanish academic is both a media player and the leader of Spain's newest left-wing political party, Podemos. In 2010, just as Spaniards took to the streets to protest austerity, Iglesias started presenting an online talk show called La Tuerca. The broadcast would lay the foundations for the political party and also injected Iglesias onto the talk show sets and the airwaves of the mainstream media. Seven years later, Iglesias spends more time in Parliament than in the studio as the leader of the third largest political party in Spain. I think that La Tuerca was born as a marginal proposition, lacking resources, ready to die in its battle against the big networks. But beyond the success it may have had, it has shown that there was a crack in the wall, and we got in through this crack and have widened the space for ourselves. La Tuerca laid the foundations and proved the need for Podemos in Spanish politics. Although it may seem strange having a show like La Tuerca, it does explain the success of Pablo Iglesias, his shoot to stardom. Iglesias and his team did the legwork to understand how the media works, especially television, before their big jump into politics. Pablo has done something that I like to illustrate with this thought. If the revolutionaries of the past went up the mountains to fight, now they fight from TV studios. From 2014 onwards, Podemos made a series of electoral breakthroughs and the tone of media coverage switched from curiosity to alarm. The party was described as undemocratic, with economically unsound policies posing a threat to Spanish unity. And Podemos was reported to be connected to governments the Spanish media disapprove of. In April last year, the national paper ABC reported that the late Venezuelan president, Hugo Chavez, funded Podemos to the tune of 7 million euros. ABC's source document was real, but its interpretation was a reach. The funds had been sent to a left-wing think tank in 2008, six years before Podemos was even created. The editor of ABC stands by the story. We are among the very few who have consistently warned about the lack of democratic principles in Podemos. We stand up for freedom. Podemos doesn't. We stand for a free market economy. Podemos doesn't. We stand for the unity of Spain. Podemos doesn't. So it makes sense that we clash on these issues. We have a document that proves the Chavista regime gave Podemos over $7 million. 
Deciding whether the funding is irregular or not is a question for the courts. It's absurd for Podemos to pretend that the money from Venezuela is non-existent. ABC wasn't the only outlet to report on Podemos in Venezuela. No es nueva la relación que algunos partidos políticos españoles han tenido y tienen con el gobierno venezolano de Nicolás Maduro. In January 2016, Spain's largest private broadcaster, Antena 3, used old footage of academics linked to Podemos on a visit to Venezuela to say the party was in cahoots with the government in Caracas. Other outlets went even further. I have to say that this man receives money from Venezuela. I don't say it. He has said Digital, he has said the world, he has said the country. We have said it all. Eduardo Inda, the editor of online outlet OK Diario, accused Podemos of obstructing the investigation. Eduardo Inda, the editor of online outlet OK Diario, accused Podemos of obtaining funds illegally from Venezuela, an allegation the party is still fighting in the courts. Many members of Podemos have been to court at least 10 or 12 times to face charges, some plainly absurd, others based on false evidence. We have won 100% of the cases. The charges have all been lies. However, the lack of truth doesn't seem to matter, because when they criticize you, it's in the headlines and the talk shows. When the judges say there is no case against you, nobody reports it. Few in Podemos have been surprised by the hostile coverage from commentators and outlets on the political right. But El País, Spain's centre-left newspaper of record, is another matter. In the pages of El País, Podemos has been presented as radical, its policies dangerous, and another emerging party, the right-wing Ciudadanos, has often been characterised as a new hope for Spain's tired and corrupt political system. We've been critical with Podemos for their stances and at the beginning with, for their financing. But we've been very critical with Ciudadanos. We actually don't give them like a lot of coverage. We haven't favored any type of coverage or we haven't favored any of their measures over the rest. El País has become more and more hostile towards what it considers to be threats to the status quo, namely Podemos and the Catalan independence movement. It has been much kinder towards Ciudadanos, and this happened when Podemos started to emerge as a political alternative that could really change the balance of forces within the political establishment. There's another factor at play in Spain's press, their economic crisis. With falling revenues, advertiser shortfalls and fewer readers, newspapers like El País, El Mundo and La Vanguardia have had to turn to some of the country's largest banks like Caixa Bank and Banco Santander for loans to bail them out. The new economic reality has had an impact on newsrooms through layoffs and some say editorial output has been affected too. The Spanish media are now weapons of massive disinformation. Papers of record in Spain, like El País, are merely vehicles of special interests, sometimes at war with each other. We know that 100% of Spanish press are losing money, and the outlets are kept afloat by big economic players, because it's a way to put pressure on the political establishment. This newspaper doesn't have, at the editorial level, any contact with any financial institutions, or any of the investors that have a stake in the Prisa Group, which is the parent company. There is no such thing as any collusion between the editorial part and the financial interest. While its dust-ups with Spanish media continue, Podemos has kept chipping away at what it calls the status quo narrative. The party still churns out the weekly broadcast that got it started. Some have described the media output here at La Tuerca as partisan, populist, as propaganda. Podemos say it's just the way round the political and economic orthodoxies that dominate media coverage in Spain. I would say the political leaders of Podemos have been very, very effective in controlling the message and the way they deliver the message. No les damos miedo nosotros, les da miedo lo que representamos. Y para ellos representamos la libertad. And I think they have actually valued more form over substance. In a way in which they have actually gotten a lot of coverage, image coverage, TV coverage, newspaper coverage. We know Podemos benefits from being the protagonists in the media. But I can proudly say that ABC doesn't play along very often. 
The strategy of Podemos is sometimes childish or even narcissistic. It's like they're playing rather than doing politics. That hostile attitude towards Podemos should be taken as a positive sign, since this hostile treatment comes from them being regarded as a threat. Podemos has two possibilities ahead. Either they're forgotten by the media because they pose no threat, or the media ends up repositioning itself because Podemos managed to truly condition Spanish politics.